right, so this is uh, Dr. James Canton here, right, right with me in Mill Valley, California. Uh, and I'm Gerd Leonhardt, futurist, and we collaborate on, on speaking missions and, and our futurist work. And uh, today we're going to briefly talk about what we think are the key trends in the next five years uh, in general, not just technology, but across the board. So why don't you, you know, tell us in two minutes, <laughs> now, tell us quickly what those trends are, and well, then we, we can ping pong a little bit. Of course, uh, you know, big trend that changes, disrupts, uh, enlivens is technology. And there are five key technologies that will transform the future. Now, these are only good for the next 100 years. <laughs> uh, after that, don't email us. Okay. Uh, but it's nanotechnology, uh, biotechnology, IT, uh, neurotechnology, and of course, quantum technology. Mm -hmm. And everything related to consumers or making products or some kind of services, or actually even the life of uh, organizations is going to be based on the uh, the innovations that will come very quickly, mm -hmm. and the convergence of nano, bio, neuro, quantum, and IT are going to transform our world. Everything from mobility to new nanoscale uh, products, molecular manufacturing. So we're in a time of dynamic, dynamic, disruptive, and I call it kinetic change. Kinetic change. Okay, I, I would add to that. You know, from my point of view, of course, technology is is the key driver there. But technology is also changing culture. So all of a sudden we are, I call this, you know, I think it's actually an Ericsson header now, is the network society. We're actually, we're a global village now, as Marshall McLuhan said. We actually are a global village. You know, look at Facebook, one billion people in a village, uh, more, more or less, right? And it's bigger than most countries are now. So the network society, all the data that we generate, you know, what's called big data, and this is, of course, a technology-driven thing as well, that data, for example, allows us to say, well, whoever liked President Obama, you know, tell us what kind of food they like, we can find out on Facebook now, right? right. So big data, uh, technology, mobility. Uh, also, I think the, uh, we're getting to solve some of those issues like uh, poverty and, and starvation. There's less wars, even though there's more terrorism. Right? But so the couple of key trends, uh, demography, people are getting older. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a major trend for society, for how we take care of older people, what we do with them, education changing because of digital. And this is a key driver. You know, education is uh, your only defense against uh, you know, being unemployed in the future. But also people are going to be living longer. Uh, I think the largest marketplace of the 21st and 22nd century is going to be the health enhancement marketplace. Yeah. People are going to be living longer, uh, but we need to defeat Alzheimer's. We need to restore the aging brain, uh, people's mobility, their cognitive functions, uh, just defeating cardiovascular disease and cancer, which are the killers of our society. I mean, as the world ages, particularly Europe, the United States, and Japan, and then within 15 years, of course, China will have an aging phenomena. Mm -hmm. We need to do better at improving and enhancing the health of the population because even though there's going to be 9 billion more people maybe in 50 years or more, uh, the question is, what will be the quality of life? And maybe on the planet, uh, sustainability mm -hmm. will be just as important too. I'm sure you have something to say about that. that. That's a big topic. I mean, the, on, the, on this issue of, uh, you know, age and, and uh, you know, Kurzweil says we're reaching the, uh, the level of singularity uh, to where machines can be basically enhance what humans do and vice versa probably. I think in the next 15 years or so, the major issue is about, you know, what, what is a human remain uh, in terms of what they are, what's going to be augmented, well, you know, transhumanism. And these are major ethical issues, you know, practical issues like, you know, when I'm rich, do I have the right to buy a new liver? But the poor guy can't afford it. But there is one, you know, so there's going to be a market. This is a very strange society also. Assume I can have a brain implant with Wikipedia, you know? so I'm a better speaker because I have all Wikipedia information. But is it still me? Is that, <laughs> is that true, by the way? Well, no, that, that's. Do you have a brain implant? Yes, yes, I have. I have several of those. <laughs> that's why I'm so vastly successful. Just kidding. Exactly. Uh, I think I look great for 85. <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> well, I watched the, uh, you know, what's the uh, Total Recall, the remake. I watched the movie, yeah. and I realized, you know, a lot of those things in the movie actually are somewhat true. You know, we can. Uh, so. The transhumanism and this convergence of human and machine brings up a huge amount of opportunities for medicine, but also a huge amount of issues. You know, women and, and many guys have plastic surgery now because they want to have a better nose. And that's kind of normal. But is it normal to say that, you know, you want to be able to lift a car so you're going to get a bionic arm, you know? Well, I think what's going to happen uh, is we're going to have uh, a, whether we like it or not, again, one of the things we as futurists do is don't necessarily judge the future. 
but we report on what we think the future trends are going to be, yeah. we will have a uh, two classes of the world within 20 years. Uh, and to a certain extent, we have them today. Uh, if you're in the developed world, uh, the affluent world, you have access to statins and blood pressure and better nutrition and, of course, more security. Already, just from having better public health, we've increased longevity from the average age people a century lived to was 40 years old. We've increased it now to in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, it is possible that there will be a new enhancement that will enable you to live middle age, maybe in your 80s or even 100 plus. Well, yeah, my, my theory is that I think in order to keep uh, this inequality from blowing up the planet, which, which in a way this is the source of terrorism, of course, right? Uh, ultimately, we have to give some of that to whoever wants it, regardless of their ability to pay, uh, because otherwise it creates an inequality which creates much larger issues. And so, the way of solving crime or terrorism is usually more creating an, an equal opportunity to where people have better things to do than to kill themselves with, with suicide bombs. You know, so this is the typical scenario. I think that we're seeing in the next uh, twenty years, solving those problems will take quite a bit of vision. You know? it, it will, but keep in mind, at the same time, we have massive innovations exploding, yeah. uh, greater enhanced uh, health, uh, greater longevity. Uh, at the same time, what are we going to have? In terms of population density, I mean, we've got a billion people yeah. on the planet today that can't find a clean glass of water. We have another 2 billion people out of 7 billion that are in poverty. So we're going to have 8 billion people by 2035 to enhance all those people uh, so they're at the same, uh, so they live just as long as everybody else. That's going to create an overpopulated world where we can't feed, clothe, and provide health care for even three quarters of the planet. You know, not three quarters, but let's say one quarter of the planet today. I think we have major global risks that are going to face us, and these are very serious issues. Uh, these are issues that will re require more than a few futures to be able to help our clients yeah, figure out. We can't solve all those this afternoon. No, you know, we'll have to use next week for that as well. Maybe. But <laughs> yeah, I think that there, there is uh, the issue of water, for example, getting clean water, that is technology-wise uh, a, a low-hanging fruit to solve. Right? The other issue of having, for example, food, you know, vegetarianism is going to be a standard, or you're going to eat fake meat. Uh, in my view, that's, that's, that's a trend, you know, that we, we are not going to eat meat like we do today. Uh, whether we like it or not, that's a, that's a huge challenge. So, but why? Well, because I think that basically with a lar much larger number of consumers wanting, claiming their right for, for meat and the production of meat being very involved and very extensive, you can do it in Argentina when you have wide open spaces. Yeah, but in Germany or so, you know, then it's quite clear that the meat eating is, uh, or, or fish eating, because of the overfishing, is, is we're going to have to find another solution. But the other point I want to discuss briefly was the, the uh, sustainability and the I call this the green business future. I think a main, a main trend that we see in our work is that every single company is interested now in being more, you know, doing the right thing and making money. Uh, if, if, you know, Richard Branson talks about this a lot, how that can be combined, mm -hmm. which is well, maybe not always true, but, but um, that is now a, a sustainability default. So I think in five years there won't be a company around that is not going to be oh, really agree. responsible, that I, they'll I be agree. gone. You know? Social accountability.